Welcome, and we're back again this week, and this week we're going to do a part two on long haulers and why long haulers have these symptoms that seem to persist for weeks to months. And um, so that's what we're going to talk about today. If you remember, there were, um, there were three um, mechanisms that uh, researchers around the world were thinking uh, were the cause of long haulers disease, but there were two that were pretty compelling and I want to focus on. Remember the NAD molecule that produces ATP and we all need that ATP to function, the energy to move. And we found that with COVID-19 infection, uh, there's an enzyme that uh, is shut down so we don't have the NAD plus to make the ATP. What we found happens is tryptophan, which is an amino acid, uh, is borrowed from another system in our body to try to make the ATP. But in the process of that, the tryptophan is depleted from its, its regular activity. That, in effect, depletes serotonin, and then the mast cells are activated. So, once the mast cells are activated, we, get, we know we get histamine that is produced, and not only histamine, but a thousand other modulators and mediators of pro-inflammatory problems, and then we have a whole chaotic, and, and some refer to as a cytokine storm that occurs. And so uh, therein lies the problem with that mast cell and the histamine and those inflammatory cells. And there's a um, article below if you look on the link below, there's an article that talks about uh, mast cell uh, activation. So with all this going on, basically what we have is our immune system is stuck in high gear, producing all of these inflammatory cells. And so what happens is these people that have been infected with COVID-19 are suffering and there's, a, there's multiple organ systems that are affected by these inflammatory cells. And we can see by the list that it hits about every different system. There are probably mm, somewhere in between 25 to 30 percent of the people that have been infected with COVID-19 are having these long hauler symptoms. All of these terrible symptoms and some people have not been able to return to work or return to their usual activity, their usually daily activity. I really want to focus on some treatment options for the people that have these, these patients that have suffered or are suffering from long haulers. We want to look at, since we know that histamine is a, is a, is a key chemical that's involved, we want to look at the foods that we eat. When we eat foods that, are hist that, that have histamine in them, his, they're going to cause histamine to be released from the mast cells. And so when we talk about foods, we're talking about foods like bananas, processed foods, reheated foods, TV dinners, avocados, tomatoes. Those kinds of, those foods are histamine related foods they stimulate the mast cell to produce histamine. If you're a long hauler, you wanna to talk to your doctor about this, these histamine-related foods and, and what you should and should not be eating. The other thing I thought that was real interesting is some of the things that we drink, uh, teas, um, green tea, coffee, alcohol, they all have in them a chemical that decreases the breakdown of histamine. If you're drinking a lot of coffee and drinking a lot of different teas and drinking alcohol, that's going to prevent histamine from being broken down. And so you're going to end up with histamine, uh, chronic histamine in your system. This information is coming from not only people in the United States, but from people, researchers from around the world um, are making these recommendations 
and uh, coming up with this compelling evidence. We just looked at diet and we showed diet to roll in the long hauler symptoms. So look it over and talk to your uh, primary care physician or, or your, your physician who's taking care of you about that. The other thing is um, medications. Which, which, which vitamins, which medications could be helpful? Well, first of all, we know that uh, we already talked about NAD+, which is converted over through a series of chemical reactions, is reverted to ATP. And we talked about how important ATP is. One of the things that we saw was that uh, with infection by the virus, the NAD is kind of knocked out of the system and you get the leaking of, of energy until tryptophan comes, tryptophan comes around and it starts producing more NAD. So one of the, one of the vitamins that increase your NAD plus is niacin, uh, vitamin B3, niacin. So one of the things that you would want to talk to your doctor about is, hey, I'm having all these symptoms and they're not going away. Uh, uh, what about niacin? Because niacin, from, from what I'm told and what I see in the research, check the articles below, uh, niacin increases NAD+, which would increase ATP. The second one is um, antihistamines. Makes sense to shut down the histamine, to shut down the mast cell. And there's two types of antihistamines. There's H1 and H2. The H1 antihistamines, a lot of people are probably familiar with. Claritin, Zyrtec, and Allegra. They're all considered in that H1 family. H2 antihistamines are uh, medications like famotidine or Pepsid. Uh, the medicine that you take for GERD and peptic ulcer, that's an antihistamine. So that's another one that should be considered. Vitamin C is an antihistamine. And we've talked a lot about vitamin C. So you can see vitamin C is involved in a lot of things. Here it is again, it's an antihistamine. Curacetin is a mast cell stabilizer. So it uh, kind of stabilizes that mast cell so it's not just going crazy with all these inflammatory cells. And then there's also zinc. We've talked about zinc and selenium. If you're a long hauler and you're having these symptoms, these are our vitamins and minerals that I would definitely uh, have a discussion with my primary care doctor about. One thing I want to mention about patients that are long haulers, and you know if, you, if you're a long hauler because you are continuing to have symptoms and you were infected two months ago. One of the things that you don't want to do, as bad as you do want to start to exercise and you know get on your bike or whatever you do for exercise, it's recommended that you really take it slow in starting to exercise. Because for some reason, patients that are long haulers, when they start to really try to get into that exercise, guess what's released? histamine. So be careful about the amount of exercise and the vigor of exercise, the intensity that you do, that you start to go back into the exercise because it can actually make things worse. And then you exercise and you feel twice as bad as you did before you exercise. So we're trying to give you information that will be helpful as we move through this pandemic. It's not over. I think only 30 million people have been um, uh, vaccinated and we talked about herd immunity. You can go back to some of the previous videos and, and look at that, what that means. So we want to continue to, to wear the mask and a social distance, wipe things off, ventilation, all of the things that we were doing before. Uh, I, I do think things are getting better. And we want things, and we want things to get. We want to get back to our norm. We want to get back to the new norm. Let us all do the things that we need to do to help get the country and the world back to our new norm. So until next week, stay safe. Uh, if you like this video, push the like button. 
If you have comments, put it in the comment section below. And as always, you can become a subscriber. We bring information every week for you.